Hello, I'm Avery or Hazel or Kylie. You can just pick one. I don't care. Hello, I am Lily. And welcome to the From the Closet podcast. Today we are covering Cars 3. Uh, so, you know, back to pretty much back to back, uh, closing out um, closing out two different series. Granted, I think there was a TV show episode between Matrix 4 and this one. Um, yeah, there was. It was... Okay, I, I actually don't know what it was. I don't fucking care. Um, but anyway... Yeah, Cars 3. Uh, so, if you'd like to avoid spoilers for said movie, there will be a link in the description below to the Just Watch page for it. Uh, that page will have, price, will have links to every platform you can rent, purchase, or stream this movie on, with price comparisons for renting and purchasing. For us here in the U.S., it's available for streaming on Disney+. Plus. You will also find in the description a link to our Patreon where you can vote on future episodes of this show, as well as get access to episodes before they release, as well as access to episodes of our sister show, Off the Shelf, which is about books. Speaking of future episodes, you can join us later this week for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6. Lily, can you please spin the wheel to determine what they can join us for? Um, wait, no, not Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6. I am wait, yes, so wrong. Yes, 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 let's go! Um, Avery, you're okay. gonna be happy to know that um, our the movie that is gonna be later this week is gonna be quite amazing. It is the Amazing Spider-Man. Ah, that's quite fitting because the sequel just dropped on Disney Plus. Huh. Fucking now we can continue Spider-Man and we don't have to delay that one Spider-Man movie. Hooray. Well, we will see. I see. But, I, see. Uh, I, mean, I mean, who knows? Yeah. But sorry about my flub earlier. I'm pretty sure Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6 has already released um, <laughs> at the time that this episode is coming out. Um, um, yes. Yeah. So, sorry about that. Uh, later this week, you can join us for The Amazing Spider-Man, um, which is good, because, good lord, yet another movie I have not seen. Um, but anyway, you can also join us next week for our free film day for uh, uh, October. Uh, yeah, it's October, because this month... At the time we're recording it, this month was, um, this month is August, and we did that, yeah, okay. I, I, I'm remembering the months by the Marvel movies we did. Um, <laughs> and in that vein, you can also join us next week for Captain Marvel. So close to Endgame, and yet so far. <laughs> not for us, Because for us, it's... Um, yeah, we're not... We're not that close to uh, Endgame. Yeah, it's like, in terms of release schedule, y'all are close to hearing our Endgame coverage. We are months away from covering it. <laughs> and that is in fucking November, and then... Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, it's... Oh, oh, fuck. Hey, um, Avery, what? um, how many episodes, um... Oh, wait, no, wait, shit, sorry, that's just far from home, never mind, I forgot, I forgot there was three Spider-Man movies, and that's not the one we have to worry about. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> no. No Way Home is the one we have to worry about. Which is fucking next year. Actually, though, it's the August, um, uh, one. Yeah, interesting. Um, but anyway, um, also in the description, you will find a link to Anchor.fm, which is now Spotify for podcasters. And that page will have links to every platform that you can listen to this podcast on, um, as well as links to our Instagram and Twitter, where you can be notified when we release new episodes. But with all that being said, please get out if you would like to avoid spoilers, because we are going to start discussing this movie now.
Vroom. So, uh, Vroom. prior to today, I had never seen this movie, and I had heard a lot of good things about it. But the reason I never watched it was because I had this thing where it's like, why the fuck would I watch Cars 3 before Cars 2? And Cars 2 was preventing me from watching this movie. And, um, tech, so, there's something about Cars 3 I want to, sorry, not Cars 3, Cars 2 I want to bring up real quick. Sure. Because while they never directly mention the events of Cars 2, they never retconned it either. I mean, they kept the uh, whole thing of, like, Doc Hudson dying, so. Yeah, but, obviously, like, we don't know anything about Doc Hudson's death. We don't know when, which I guess if we're keeping in Cars 2, before Cars 2. Mm. So, something about this movie that I was thinking about, this movie could stand on its own. Like, you don't even need to see Cars 1 to understand this movie. This movie does a very excellent job at telling you who Doc Hudson is. The only thing you don't get, um, the only thing you don't get if you watch this movie and you haven't seen Cars 1 is Chick Hicks. And who did not even serve a important role in this movie. He was just there. Yeah, he was just there. So, well, oh, okay, and then there's also a, like, cameo appearance from King at the end. But he doesn't even have any speaking lines, I don't think. So, yeah. Like, oh, and there was a that, whole thing with really... uh, Dynaco as well. Like, you don't yeah, I mean, need to know. It's just like, oh, hey, look, Dynaco here now. Yeah. It's like, it's there for the people that know. But you could watch this movie having never seen Cars 1 or Cars 2. And you could also definitely watch this movie having seen Cars 1 and never seen Cars 2. In fact, that I just... just didn't want to... I just did not want to watch them out of order because it felt weird to me. I, I get that. And because of that, um, here we are. You've watched both of them. All of yes. them, actually. Now, for years, um, I had heard that Cars 3 was the best Cars movie. And now, I'm coming out having seen it, and they are absolutely right. <laughs> like, it's... I don't even think it's close. Cars was just a weird this concept. This movie... It is a weird concept, but I think they executed it better than Cars 1 executed its concept. Yeah, I mean, that's what I mean. Like, the whole series is just a weird concept. Yeah. And now that I think about it, I actually just don't think this movie would have worked without them being cars. Maybe, like, if you make them runners. But even then, you know, you can't have, like, oh, the new generation of runners are taking over. I feel like it just makes I mean, more sense as uh, cars. It, it, it's a... It is kind of a thing you could do with runners, actually. Um, when it comes to everything, the whole th the, more than anything, this movie is about like character growth than it is about racing. Like that is racing true. is kind of yeah, like racing is kind of just the framework for this story rather than um, rather than the story itself. In Cars 1, it felt like racing was mostly the story. Um, we don't like it talk was the... about Cars 2, um, but... <laughs> yeah. But, like, racing and, like, the plot line of racing, like... While it didn't serve as a um, dynamic um, plot line, like... Racing was the consequences throughout this movie. 
that was yeah. the deadline. That was the motivation. Everything in this movie, at the at the very least, ties back into the art of racing. I don't really necessarily agree here. Um, see, my perspective is like Cars One. Everything is about the race, like Lightning McQueen's motivations throughout the entire movie are just, I want to get out of this stupid fucking town so I can go race. Here, um, it's hard to say that Lightning McQueen is the only protagonist. Like, it's really hard for me to say that. Um, but the story here isn't about Lightning McQueen going to a race. It's about learning to adapt to a new environment. Yeah, he, I mean, that's the that's the thing about this movie. And it kind of just surprises you at the end. Like, I knew the surprise, but this entire movie wasn't about Lightning McQueen at all. It was about that other person. I don't remember their name. But this was their either. training. This was their montage video. Yeah, I saw that coming, actually. I think they they planted the seeds of that quite well, and I definitely picked up on them. Like, they planted so many things that I knew were going to come back later. Um, especially, like, the whole Doc Hudson flip thing. Like, I knew that was going to come back in the uh, near the end of the movie and be, like, really satisfying. And it did. And I also this movie has, like, their own chick hits, but not really. Like, they have, like, a new personality, still just as cocky. Um... Also fast, I yeah. guess. That's that's his other personality. Yeah, Johnson Storm. And I'll be honest, if there is anything this movie could have done better, it was that character. Because he is not compelling um, at all. But why does he need he's to just, be? Jake Hicks he's was just never compelling, I, ever. But he served the narrative purpose... Of being a villain. Yeah, but the thing is, the whole Cars 1 didn't really put any sort of focus on the idea of, like, Chick Hicks is the main villain. He was kind of a very, very much backseat role, and Storm takes a much bigger active role in this movie. Because in this movie, Storm is the embodiment of what uh, McQueen can't achieve. That's that's kind of the point here. Chick was always, at best, on par with Lightning McQueen. But with this movie, like, we have Storm and he's on a level McQueen simply cannot attain. And when you have a character who's taking a more active role in the story, uh, like Storm is, I feel like you need a little more than, okay, yeah, this guy's just a dick. I mean, the way that they presented him in the movie, like, he wasn't just a dick, he was also a fast dick. And he was good. Fucking born good, actually. I mean, this if anything, this movie is just um, against um, being born good. I, there's a <laughs> word for that. Can't remember. Yeah, I don't know, but... That's just how I feel. I feel like that's one thing this movie could have done better. That said, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. But, I mean, whatever. Um, 
I did like the whole, um, what did they call it? Mount Thunder sequence. I thought, I, uh, oh, I thought that was pretty cool. It, it, it was funny seeing a school bus. Um, and yeah, uh, they called her Frittle or something like that. I don't know. It seems like a very fitting name for a bus driver. Almost like she's intentionally giving it, get, being given a very similar name to another animated bus driver. So you're going to bring up that now? Yeah. I mean, it's a whole thing. Uh, Pixar theory implications on this movie are pretty light. But... Not entirely. I mean, the only... No, like... They are pretty light. Like, the only major thing in this movie that has anything to do with the Pixar theory is actually the scene where um, Yellow Car stops because she doesn't want to hit a crab. Just, hey, like that's look, crab. Yeah, also, like that's really um, it. Yellow Car thinks crabs are cute. Uh, it's not important, but a uh, fun fact. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I would I would say crabs are cute, but to each their own, I guess. I mean, whatever. But yeah, like, that's really the only thing that has any effect on the Pixar theory. And it really doesn't change anything, because crabs are known to survive in trashy environments which is what the cars movie is supposed to take place in in the pixar theory so it's just kind of a thing it's like hey this exists moving on <laughs> i mean it served one joke and that's it yeah i mean one joke that did come back later um but yeah, that's fine. Uh, interesting how they abused a loophole in the race. Um, and it allowed, it technically allowed Lightning McQueen to win. I mean, it makes sense. Since, you know, it's part of Lightning McQueen's team, Lightning McQueen would also win. Yeah. And I mean,. I know there are going to be people who are like, oh, he didn't win, she did. But, like, hot take, the person who starts the race is just as important as the person who finishes it. I mean, yeah. If, I mean, if the person starts terrible, what, do you think the person that's going to uh, finish it is just going to suddenly succeed? It's possible. It is possible to make a comeback, but it is much harder. Against fucking Storm? You see how, you I mean, see how well he was built up? Yeah, and then there was still a comeback in that race, so... But a more believable one. But yeah, I like that they dived into things like drafting. Um... Because they didn't really mention any of these racing nuances in Cars 1 or 2. They mentioned one thing about uh, in Cars 1, and they didn't even delve deep into it. Like, I think the only real nuance that they brought in in 1 or 2 was drifting. Um, what, what was the line? Um, turn right to go left. Yeah, like, yeah, okay, you've introduced the concept of drifting. People have been doing that in Mario Kart for decades. I mean, to be fair, that is just one button, press, and then turn. <laughs> I, I feel like drifting is a little bit more complicated when you're actually in a car. Probably. For sure. But what if you are the car? 
Oh, God! <laughs> it's just like, those ads, like, what if you are the controller? As, like, one of those, like, arm things. But, I mean, we've already had a game system where you were the controller. And it didn't do... Actually, that's not a game system, and you know it. It kind of is. It has its own unique games. Has its own unique games, but it's for a peripheral, not the entire system. Unless you're counting the Xbox One, which is fucking weird. Well, see, that's the thing. They weren't 360 games. They weren't Xbox One games. They could be played on both. Wait, really? Yeah. Okay, however, like, the Xbox 360 games, they still said Xbox 360, um, Connect. None of the ones I saw did. They just said Xbox Connect. I have Xbox uh, 360 uh, Connect games. Um... So does my sister. Granted, she has like four, so. And I don't even think she has a Connect anymore to play them, so. <laughs> That's a whole thing. But, I mean, just another thing, like, I'm pretty sure. That if you were to go onto your like Xbox Live profile, they would be listed as Connect games and not 360 games or Xbox One games. I don't fucking want. And it's the same on X Exo Phase, by the way. They they just list it as Connect. Huh. I still don't want to check. But yeah, um, back on Cars Three. Uh, for once, I actually, uh, for once. You know, since I've started doing it, I actually didn't take notes today. Partly because, honestly, I couldn't be fucked to take notes for Cars 3, of all things. But for another, I did not want to get up and find my notebook. Yeah. But hey, um... I mean, there wasn't really much to take notes on anyway. Yeah, I feel like one of the only things I would have written down was that, like, the school bus was most likely a magic school bus, like, reference. Mm. And a a as you heard earlier in the podcast, I didn't forget to mention it. Wow, you didn't forget. That's crazy. I mean, I forget to mention a lot of stuff in a lot of episodes a lot. That's why I started taking notes. I mean, yeah. Like, we, we did our whole Legends of the Guardians episode, and neither one of us, a single time, talked about the Owl City song that was in the movie, which, by the way, is fucking great. Uh, if you saw our episode on that movie, and you were upset we didn't talk about the song... We just forgot. It is a great song. <laughs> um, from the podcast episode, talking about um, everything that we've neglected to talk about, when? Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that would be super nice. It's never going to happen. <laughs> Director's cut. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, it's a whole thing. I mean, that's why I've started taking notes, so that I don't forget to talk about stuff. Man, this movie has some songs in it. About... Yeah. Yeah, this it movie does. has some songs in it. I'm not sure if they're original, but they seem like they are. None of them are playlist-worthy. None of them are anywhere near the level of, like, Life is a Highway from Cars 1, which technically wasn't even an original song. It was a cover but still, that cover was made for Cars 1, so. It fits, kind of. I actually have that uh, song on my fucking iPod. Yeah. Like, the, it's the a, Cars it, version, Life too. is a Highway is good. But, yeah, um, I don't really have much more to say, honestly. Do you? No, but we probably should make some more things to say. 
I wonder, okay, let me, let me move closer to my fucking screen so I can see how much we've been going for. At least yeah, five Jesus more Christ. Minutes. Yeah, it feels like we've been talking for longer, and yet we somehow haven't. Um, <laughs> I suppose, like, the character development in this movie is fun to watch. Um, I had no doubt that what's-his-face, the, the, the guy who bought Rusty's, I had no doubt he was gonna turn out to be, like, a scumbag by the end of the movie. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant, like, the person who bought Rusty's from the scumbag. Sorry, that was, like, the first image that, uh, that came to my mind when he said that. Yeah. I mean, I he had an interesting had... Fa facade. Like, he didn't outright come out as a scumbag. But I wouldn't call him a twist villain. Just that, you know, he obviously he's a businessman. He has his own, um, his own um, agenda. You know, the only also... time he was being a scumbag is when it would give him more profit. Yeah, I also totally called that he would try to, like, give McQueen the boot. Like, I saw that one coming. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, they, they seed these things quite well. Because they talk about, and they show, other racers who are, like, from McQueen's generation also getting the boot from their sponsors. So it it didn't surprise me at all. I mean, yeah, it's not supposed to surprise you. It's supposed to, like, you know, we're leading up to this. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, this movie is quite predictable, in my opinion, but it's not necessarily predictable to a fault. Um, there's... How should I say? There's a level of predictable which is good. And then there's a level of predictable which is bad. And this is very much on the good side. This is a legitimately good movie. Um, I find, I, like, when predictable, so it's like, it gets over the top, is when it's predictable to the point, like, points where the movie does not want you to predict. Like, you know, the movie is trying to hide... And you're just like, oh yeah, I can see that immediately. Yeah. Um, kind of like uh, Big Hero 6 with that one character being the villain. Everyone goes to that one, but still was not, the, it was not a bad movie. Anyway. but I think overall that movie isn't bad, it's just the villain sucks. Was even... No, there's no, still a lot still, of good in the movie. About, it's... Not time about cars. The <laughs> big, uh, big hero cars. Nope, that's yeah. an image in check my out, brain. Check out our, check out our uh, fucking big hero six episode if you want. Although warning, it is a pretty old episode of ours. God, God I can't old. even remember what. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I thought that. I was like, I cannot remember when we recorded that. Yeah, it was definitely a long-ass time ago. Uh, content warning, uh, cringe. I mean, we should probably start off all of our episodes with that. I mean, yes, but our older episodes were more so. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Uh, this movie is legitimately good. I can't say that about Cars 2, like, at all. Um, Cars 1, even... Cars 1 is just okay. Yeah, well, I was gonna say that. Cars 1, okay, it existed. It did what it needed to do. Except I guess it didn't because Cars 2 still came out, but, you know. Yeah. Now, my... My gripe, and I know a lot of people have this gripe, hmm. is that Pixar talked about how they never really had the time 
to make Incredibles 2, and that's why it took 14 years for it to come out. And, like, you made three Cars movies during that time. You had the time to do Incredibles 2. <laughs> Maybe they just, they just couldn't think of, like, a way to make Incredibles 2, you know, its own unique thing. You know, like, wh wh where do you go from there? And I still have no idea where you would go from there, because, like, that would actually make a better Incredibles 2. Yeah, the sad thing is Incredibles 2 didn't turn out to be particularly great either. It's still a good movie, it's just... It's nowhere near the caliber of Incredibles 1. I'll be honest, so... I think... Because all these, like, you know, sequels, you know, came out around the same time. You know, Incredibles 2, Finding Dory, this movie. And I have to say... Monsters University, Toy Story 4. Yeah. This one would be the best one if you just, like, from original to now. The best improvement, I would say, yeah. Yeah. The best um, improvement to the original source material. I would say Toy Story 4 um, is an improvement over 1, just in my personal opinion. Okay, better like, um, storytelling or better graphically? Both. <laughs> but, I, like, I, I'll always try it for is, Toy Story 1 story. But I, I wouldn't categorize it as, like, the best improvement because it is pretty damn hard to beat Toy Story 2. I mean, Toy Story 2 is pretty good, but I mean, Toy Story 1 is still up there for me. But yeah, uh, Cars 3, definitely an improvement over Cars 2. Certainly... Um, certainly also an improvement over one. Although, I think, like, the after two, there mm -hmm. wasn't really anywhere to go but up. <laughs> yeah, I guess that makes sense. Though, I think the improvement is really just makes it more worth. Like, I can definitely see some of the other sequels it being better, but I just don't think that they deserved being made over Cars 3. Which had... Yeah, I would... I would say Finding Dory probably deserves it more than a lot of the rest of them. Um, and that is also a legitimately good movie, and it's a very logical sequel to Finding Nemo. Um, it's a great movie. It, except for that one scene where Dory drives a truck off a cliff. That, that was ridiculous. But other than that, great movie. Well, I, I'm sorry, Avery, um... When was this movie? When when were these movies supposed to be realistic? Also, I know bitch, it's not realistic, but like that's pushing it. Bitches push uh, driving trucks off cliffs is cool. If you say so, <laughs> I have a interesting. Uh, uh, reality of what is uh, um, a good movie. Or what is a good scene, rather. Up is pretty weird, too, with shit like that. Because we have scenes of dogs piloting planes. Okay, to be fair, those dogs can talk. And since those dogs can so talk, they can be taught things. I think that's I how know. that works. Up is just weird sometimes. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. Cars 3 is a good movie. It's the best of the Cars movies, but there's not it's... much more to say about it. Um, critic ratings? Yeah. Ooh, instead of five minutes, we got an extra ten minutes. How funny. Laugh now. Why doesn't this... 
laugh so hard that milk comes out your nose like you're Riley Anderson from Inside Out. That that delivery was so dry. Holy shit. It was supposed to be. I'm just saying, like, you have mastered your dry deliveries. Anyway. Um, IMDB um, gives this a 6.7 out of 10. Ron Tomatoes gives this a 9... Uh, fuck me. A 69%. And nice. <laughs> um, and eighty percent of Google users like this movie. I think I'll give this a seven point seven. Hmm. Interesting. Um, seven point five. Hmm. All right. Well, join us later in the week. For the amazing Spider-Man, who's actually not that amazing. He's just kind of okay. Um, but but he's Spider-Man. Then, he, he is. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely Spider-Man. Not Spider-Boy or anything. Um, he's a man. Certainly he's over 18. Why do you say it like that? <laughs> you can join us next week for our free film day. For October, as well as Captain Marvel. Oh God, we have to watch Captain Marvel. Um, but not soon. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but until then, I've been Avery. That's been Lily, and we will be seeing you. <laughs>